Welcome back to the series on four bar mechanism design. Uh, last video, we went over a two position synthesis of a four bar mechanism in which we designed or selected our moving and fixed pivot pivots arbitrarily for just to show the concept of how it works. And if you remember in the last video, we had to draw these extensions on the coupler that we were originally trying to move from position one to position two. But I also want to show you that you don't, you could design the connector links at a way so you don't have to draw these like extensions to your overall coupler mechanism because sometimes you don't have control over what the coupler is. You just know that there's two holes that are going to be your moving pivots and they need to be moved from position one to position two. So for instance, if I show this other coupler here, For instance, say we just have this one bar, what would we do in that scenario? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm going to move this up. Next, we're just going to design two couplers all together. So we still have our pole location. That's not going to change. What's going to change from now on are going to be the pivot, the pivot lines. Um, we selected these arbitrarily so that we can select arbitrary connectors. But now we want to say that our coupler is this length bar like it is here. So we're going to go ahead and hide this and draw another one. So the cool thing about, actually, we can actually skip this step. All right, so the cool thing, or this, you essentially get to skip this next step if you are going to be connecting directly to the ends of the two positions, um, because these lines that were the perpendicular bisectors, uh, they end up being your line of fixed pivots. Um, so if we're to do, draw new connectors, so let's say, actually let's show the old connectors while we do these, so we have some reference in how we're designing this so so let's say we want to keep the same same fixed pivot well we can't keep the same say we want to keep the same line so they want to be the same distance off the origin so we know these are going to be our two fixed pivot locations because they're all, these are the lines of fixed pivots. And then our connectors simply connect these two pivot lines. If I can connect this properly to the end of our coupler. And these become our connecting links now. Similar for the other one. So now these become keyboards so to get this line our new connector links if we wanted to keep like this the connection points to so the fixed pivot points along the same plane here but another thing that I'm just going to show you while we're in the sketch mode is if we were to let's make this construction line if we're going to continue this line up these lines because these lines go indefinitely like they go with positive negative infinity Let's say we wanted these two positions to be the fixed pivots. Our connectors could also be from above. And what we'll do, what I'll do here is I'll draw go where are you? Just clean some things up. So we'll do two examples, one with the below, one with the above, so that I can show you that it works either way and that the lines are infinite. So let's go ahead and hide our pole to clean up our sketch a little bit. Um, we can get rid of the connectors here. And you guys may have already noticed my mistake is the sketch is now outside of the main, it's outside of the skeleton model. But for now, who gives a crap? Let's move forward because the spirit of time. All right. So what I should have done while I was in those is figure out the lengths of those line, those connector lengths that we just designed. So 
let's see here. So we're going to do dimension. The lengths of each one of these lines. Obviously, you guys can probably do this step a lot faster than I do. I have to rely on time to clip them out. If I was actually able to click them out. Anyway, so we're going to get these links so that we can connect, create four more connectors, and then we can do this assembly. Oh, shit. I should click the line first before I actually try to dimension it. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to cheat because I don't want to try to memorize four numbers. Now, there is a way. Up to my side so I can have it for reference. Now there is a way where in a part design you can actually reference external models. Um, I'm not as familiar with it with this version of Creo. I did once was able to do it in the previous versions where when we go to say let's open you up just because it's already created. Uh, we're going to save this as another name and keyboards in the way. Let's name this connector uh, three. And we're going to do the bottom ones first and then I'll show you. So we need to make one connector 3.33 inches or one 4.71. So get out of the way again. So close you out. We're going to open connector three. And if you remember from the last thing, all we have to do to modify the length is just modify the sketch. So, first one is 3.33. And boom, we have this connector. So, let's save as again. I'm probably just going to do the next four through six. While I'm here, just so I don't have to do this every time. Five. Now, in true content creating fashion, I should have already created these for you since you don't have to watch this. So, if you want to, you can skip ahead until I'm actually assembling these, which will probably be in like the next five minutes because everything I do is slow. So let's go ahead and open connector four. We just did. Only no, we did three, so we got to open four. The next one was four point seven seven. Four point seven one. I mean. All right, connector five. Now the top ones were 3.94. What I was saying earlier is there is a way where I can make this sketch literally reference the model that I already created. So I, for instance, um, it's a copy geometry feature. I haven't played with it in a while, but essentially what it allows you to do is to go into the main assembly and then I could click this sketch line and then that would automatically be the line that I use to create my links. Um, it's actually a really neat feature. I need to relearn how to actually apply it to my assemblies and builds because it would make this part a lot faster and we would already move on to the next. All right, and the last one is going to be 3.22. That's funny how that worked out. A little bit shorter. Now, fortunately, I'm doing this right now, and it's not fresh in my mind. But I need—I should have came up with a better naming scheme if I was to—how uh, do you say it? Um, come back another day and try to remember which links went to what. So I'm going to go ahead and create some oh, shit, sketches out here. So, all right. So this is bad. Cat etiquette from my perspective, but all right, 
control front. Fix pivot three. Of course, I'm going to come up. Let me. All right, the next one. Front. Four. Uh, these ones are above. So we just did four, so this would be five. I'm just attempted to assemble it to this thing. I might as well get rid of it. All right. Pivot six. Lovely. All right. So now we have our axes. So now we can start assembling our links. So uh, the first one we're going to do is three. This. So the fixed pivot is going to go to. I'm just going to click it because I can see it. We're going to make it coincident. We're going to make it a pin connection. And then we're going to do the front datum plane. It's going to go to the front data plane. Now this will allow us to rotate this guy around, so just kind of get it into a position that we, are, we know it's going to be at. All right, next one, assemble, connector four. Fix pivot four goes to fix pivot four. Make it coincident, make it pin, and then front to front, so line in the plane. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the other ones now just to get them in the model. All right, so this is just like essentially repetitive assembly. Five to five. Coincident. Pin front to front. I'll go ahead and rotate down if I can pause my mouse at the right point. And last one, after six. Fix pivot to fix pivot six. Coincident in front of front. Go ahead and swing you down a little bit. All right, so now let me look at if this is in the front. Let's get rid of some of these wrong one, get rid of some of these axes. I'm going to go ahead and hide this coupler sketch here, or not coupler, connector sketch. Um, so now if I zoom in to the main thing, let's see. you can kind of see that this is going to go from here to here. This is going to go from here to here. And like you can see already that it's got, it, it's already like lined up to work. So. We have to move the coupler to beyond these in order to assemble it to them. So let's do the bottom one first. So we're going to assemble this for a little bit. Sorry, this is my model tree. All right, so we want moving pivot one, which is the left side, to go to connector three's moving pivot. Are we coincident? We're going to be a pin. And then the front data plane of the coupler or the connector. So I'm going to go to the front data plane there. And then we're going to add a new set of connections where moving pivot two is now going to go to connector four. Moving pivot, still pin connection. That's something I want to make sure it doesn't change on you. There. Boom. All right, let's make this guy transparent so we can actually see the line of our position through it. And of course, you can see the sketch in here. So let's go ahead and hide you, differentiate which is which. But now you can see this rotates from position to position. So let's go and 
demonstrate how we could do that. Put the other ones. I wish I could scroll with the middle mouse click and zoom a little bit better, but I can't. Alright, so let's go ahead and delete these connections and redo them. Put the other one just to demonstrate. Uh, while I'm getting this set up, I'm just going to outline the next video. Uh, the next video I do will also be a two position example, but it'll be an application. So what we will, we will be doing is designing a grip arm or hand for a robotic arm in order to pick up objects. Uh, that'll be the next video that I'll be releasing. Um, and I'll do a, at the end of this video, I'll show a preview of like what the, it should look like when it's done. All right, so we're going to pivot one, just the left side again. So we're going to connect five this time. And we're doing pin connection still, which is good. I like when it saves my preferences. You set. We're going to pivot two, goes to connect for six. When we pivot, front data plane to the front data plane to align it. And let's go back in. Let's get that out of the way. Now you can see it's going to position. So just to recap, in the last video we designed or we set our pull our pivot positions, fixed and moving positions arbitrarily. And we showed that in that case, then you're gonna to have to have some some extension links to your coupler if you're not gonna connect the, or you're not gonna use the pivot as the connection points of the coupler. Um, in this video, we decided that, well, what if we wanted to directly connect to our coupler because it's a fixed geometry, we have no control over its shape or how it's made. So this is what we're limited to. Now, in this scenario, we know the moving pivots are gonna be the connection points of the coupler, but we're still free to choose our fixed pivot locations. And if you remember back from this, where's the, the pivot, no, the pole. So if you go back to your pole sketch, In the case where you want to use the actual endpoints as your moving pivots, then your fixed pivot line becomes this perpendicular bisector. And in this example, we've shown that this extends both above and beyond. And matter of fact, you can actually extend it below the pole and it would still work. So if say we took our fixed pivots, be way down here, the, pr the principle will still work. You'll still design a four bar leakage, which allows the coupler to pass through the two desired positions. Okay, so for the next video that'll be coming out next week, we are going to be designing a gripper for a robotic arm, which will be constructed of two four bar mechanisms that will essentially be allowed to close in and grip any object from a piece of paper up to this maximum width here. Uh, your coupler is going to be fixed to this design here, which means our moving pivots are going to be these connecting points here for each arm. Um, now it is symmetric, so once you design the left one, the right one is essentially a mirror of the left one. So you really only need to focus on one side and then just replicate what you did on the other side and just like, reverse everything, obviously. Um, so this will be coming out later next week. I hope this video was insightful and you learned something from it. Um, I'm still new to these recordings and creating this content, so any advice or tips or tricks you may have for me, leave them down in the comments below. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.